is James Holder for Icon TV in association with Macaulay's Gym Bow. We're at the City Academy in Bristol, just witnessed an absolute cracking Channel 5 show put on by Hennessy Sports. I am joined by the main man of Hennessy Sports, Mr. Mick Hennessy. How are you, Mick? Very good, James. A little while since we caught up. Have you missed us or what? What's been cracking? <laughs> I'm a little bit elusive nowadays. But you're uh, always elusive, mate. Always pleased to see you. That's what I like to hear. And I've got to say thank you for lending me one of your jackets. It's, it's suiting me very well. It's looking a bit big on you, though, James, I must say. <laughs> Good fight for your main event, mate, I've got to say. Jack Armfield, as we well know, he came in at pretty late notice due to Elliot Matthews pulling out. Nick Blackwell again put on a cracking performance to defend his British title. Yeah. Good top of the bill fight, mate. Brilliant. It's just old school. Uh, reminds me of the old, you know, big terrestrial fights. Um, you know, blockbuster fights. That, that, that lived up to them, really. That was, that was brilliant 12 rounds of... No. Of, of, you know, at everything, it, 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 in fighting, out of fighting, great boxing, um, tremendous body punching, um, it, 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 it just had everything. And um, fair play to Jack Armfield, he's really arrived on the middleweight scene, he gave a great account of himself. Boxed very well. He did, yeah, he's, and you know, it was another style for Nick to, to work out, uh, you know, a tall, tall fighter with a peekaboo style who, who, who had a quality jab as well, let's face it, and good movement. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Nick came out in the first six rounds and I really thought he was going to blast him out, he was in sensational form. But um, Jack Armfield really, really showed his mettle tonight and uh, gutsy fighter, good boxer, very good boxer, lovely uppercut inside, working off a beautiful jab. So, um, yeah, I'll take my hat off to him. But what I would say is uh, uh, just, you know, hearing down there and, and everything that, you know, obviously it was eight, no, eight days notice and stuff, you know, Jack did have an eliminator. Um, for the British title. For the British title, yeah, which was, um, you know, the, his opponent pulled out, you know, a couple or a few weeks ago, I think it was. And, um, you know, our matchmaker obviously contacted them to basically say, would they be on standby if anything happened with this fight? Because we knew that the eliminator had fallen out and obviously he was in shape. So, um, you know, he's been ticking over. And you can't do 12 rounds at that, that sort of pace unless you're fit. And Jack Armfield was super fit. Or, uh, you know, he hasn't had a, an eight week camp specifically for Nick. I know that's slightly different, but he was super fit. So, um, you know, props to both fighters. It was, it, it was a great fight. And um, as I say, uh, Nick threw some heavy, heavy shots in there to the body and head. And, um, you know, Jack showed how tough he was. What's the plan with Nick Blackwell? I mean, do you want him to win this Lonsdale belt, out, belt outright before he then looks at European and beyond? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the route I've took, really. He's basically, you know, he, he obviously stopped John Ryder for the title. He, he, he had his first defence, and that was his second defence. So one more defence, and he's got the, the Lonsdale belt outright. And that's, that's what I set out to do. That's why he's, he's been doing British title defences. As soon as he gets his Lonsdale belt outright, we're going to go for the European title. But, you know, the board have just called for... Eubank Jr. to fight Nick Blackwell for the they've mandated him to fight for his British title, wow. which we, we was all in favour of. We've been we've been looking for. Um, I had offered Chris Eubank Jr. I'd offered him a large amount of money to fight on this actual show, and he obviously chose another route to go, a, an easier route in my opinion. You think so, you think Gary Sparkson is an easier fight than fighting Nick Blackwell? Yeah, I think I think Nick Blackwell is the best. The best, the best fighter in this country. That's 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 my personal opinion. I think he's the best middleweight, and um, you know he'll go on to prove that. You know, let's face it, he's basically he's basically come from taking short notice fights to winning the British title and now becoming a quality British middleweight champion. And I think I think he's he's definitely the best middleweight in Europe right now. And, and, and he'll go on to prove that, and he'll, he'll win European titles, and, and I believe he'll go on and win a, a world middleweight title. But um, let's see, um, you know, I offered the fight, I offered a large amount of money, they turned it down, the board have now mandated it, but let's not forget, they have mandated two eliminators with Nick Blackwell and Chris Eubank Jr. before. Two eliminators. Was that when you promoted Chris Eubank Jr.? It was, yes, it was. Yeah. And both of those eliminators, one was when I promoted him and one was after. And both eliminators, you know, were pulled out of, basically. So who's to say they're not going to pull out of this British title fight, this, this, this purse bitch? 
Now you're not working with the youth banks and sort of looking from the inside in. There was loads of questions I wanted to ask you when they was with you, but I obviously weren't tactful enough. Are they really hard work to, to deal with from your point of view? Different. Just very different, you know. It's, um, you know, they, they got their own opinions on, on, on things and, um, you know, obviously, obviously it's, it's you know, as, as promoters, it's what we do, we guide fighters. So um, there's obviously going to be differences of opinions and, um, you know, it was just one of them really, it was, a, it was, a, it was an amicable split and, and basically, um, you know, we, we was both happy with it to be fair. So, uh, it, you know, for me, you know, it weren't too long after that that I, I sort of chose to work with Nick Blackwell mm. because I believe that he's got a big future and that he's a TV fighter and that he can sort of like cross over. Do you, do you believe he can beat Christian Bank Jr. convincingly? Definitely. Definitely. I think he's got a, a, a massive engine, a real, real high work rate. And he's a, and, and he's a puncher. He's got he's got a, when he boxes he's a, he's got a fantastic jab. And um, you didn't see the best of him tonight. I know that for a fact. You did not see the best of him tonight. But um, when he, when he does put it together and show you exactly what he's got now, he, as I said, he's he's the best middleweight in Europe. Huey Fury, 21 years of age, 16 and 0, quietly moving up the rankings of all governing bodies. You and Peter Fury done a fantastic and are doing a fantastic job with him. How long do we see him sort of breaking out the domestic scene and looking to, to step up a level again into the European sort of scene? Not long at all now. I mean, that was a fantastic performance tonight. I mean, I was I was so pleased for, for Huey Lewis Fury. I mean, to me, that was he, he, he become a star tonight. He, everything come together. It was it, it was a brutal, brutal sort of like two rounds really because his jab was just phenomenal. He was whipping that jab in at range. And, and, and quick hands, but you can see the power there now, you can see the speed and you can see the power and you can see the engine. Peter's really worked on everything that worked quite right with Huey, everything that was letting him down and he's worked on everything and you see the transformation in the fight he's just, honestly, that, that was a spectacular performance for me. And, Scary um, to think he's only 21. 21, he, he's, he's, he's a, a, a heavyweight sensation, but that's the performance we knew he had in him and that's what we've been waiting for and it's just going to get better and better with him he's going to do special things very special things in the heavyweight division and go on to be a heavyweight champion in his own right Mick, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the 5th of December Lenny Dawes headlining, headlining in Car Shorten as he faces Ruben Nieto for the EBU title you've been trying to put this one together for Lenny Dawes for a long time and I've got to say congratulations you've put it together, you've finally done it and you've delivered massively for Lenny Dawes in his hometown so how, how did it all come about mate? No, thanks, James. It's, it's, um, it's something we've all worked long and hard on. Lenny's been with us from day one, um, a long time now. And he, ba he basically, you know, everyone knows that he, he, he should have got the decision in Italy a couple of years ago. Bad decision against Michele De Rocco. He's had five straight good wins since then to put that right. So here we are again. Definitely. But it was, um, you know, because De Rocco was champion, it's been hard to get him back in. But we went the EU title route and we got him back in and we got him mandatory and then, you know, he, he vacated the title. So here we are with Nieto. But um, it was important to me what, I, what happened in, in Italy that we, we basically either won the purse bid or we negotiated the fight in, in the UK because because of what happened to him. It, uh, you know, no ring music, stalls breaking, people getting some kind of what looked to be glue on cuts or adrenaline. There was a lot of lot of skullduggery in that fight. Yeah, yeah it, it was, and it was very uh, very sad for him because he's a good, honest, hard-working pro. An honest, an honest person, and uh, I had to. Uh, when he was going to fight for the European title again, we, as a company, we had to, to. We had to make sure that we got it on, you know, in the UK. And basically, I'm delighted that I've got it literally in walking distance from his house. I've got to say, massive respect, Mark. I live quite near Lenny as well, yeah. and the area is buzzing for it in a minute because he has travelled around the country. He has boxed on your shows everywhere. He's never yes. moaned. He's never said anything. He's just cracked on. But yeah. the fact that you've delivered for him and he's been with you from day one, it's a nice story, you know? Yeah, it's, it's brilliant, James. He's, 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 you know, Lenny's always been a gentleman. He's got a lovely family. 
Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's sometimes sort of like winning and losing British title fights, and it's tough, you know. And then you go out to Italy, and that happens to you. And it was just, you know, it was circumstances we couldn't control because we lost that purse bid by a very tiny amount in the end. The, the first fight against the Rocco, the Rocco yeah. yeah, for a very small amount of money. And it was a shame, really, because we're quite good at winning post bids. Um, but we got it right this time, and I, and I believe on the 5th of December he's going to become European champion. And um, he's going to he's going to realise a lifelong dream because I always I always believed that Lenny could win domestic honours, win the European title, and then you know get him his dream shot, and then you never know what could happen. Ashley Fearfane, who he knows very well, who he's been in the ring with, is on the cusp of fighting Adrian Broner. So a couple of fights for Lenny, who knows what sort of yeah, level of opposition and big fights and big yeah. paydays he could be in. Well that European title should put him top five with a governing body. So he should be, you know, he should be in the frame for world title fights. And one thing about Lenny over twelve rounds, you know, he's not he's not a six round fighter, he's not an X round an eight round fighter. He's got a quality engine, he's all, and he's built it even more over the years as he gets older. So he's a twelve round fighter. So you give Lenny someone over twelve round fight. Over, over a 12 round fight and, and uh, he might pull off a few surprises. I think he will. I went to the university and watched him do testing. Yeah. They tested him over six rounds, over, sorry, eight rounds. Every round, his punch output was higher than the round before, yeah. all the way through to eight rounds. And he was the only boxer out of the six that had that. Yeah. Incredible. Absolutely he's, incredible, Eugene. The stats don't lie. He's like a dynamo, isn't he? He is, mate. He's mate, like, genuinely is. A when, when I'm at ringside, all sometimes I've got, I always say, put your engine on him, Lenny, you know, because like if, if he, he, he goes flat out and uses that engine, he's hard to stay with. He is, yeah, definitely. definitely hard to stay with. And I'm just, you know, I'm delighted for him. I'm sure he's going to become champ, but I'll, I'll tell you what, that area, I didn't realise how much it needed a title fight like this because we, I, I wish we could have. Had a, 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 a venue twice as big. Would have sold. We, we basically sold out. Yeah, would have sold. What you got to understand is Lenny's the only senior ABA champion from that area, yeah. the only British champion from that area, and soon, so the people sort of respect him and get behind him. They followed him his whole career, and now you put him on his own doorstep. It's like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no I'm surprised. Why they can't come out, you know? We've got kids on the undercard who can't get tickets. Yeah. That's mental. You know, it's basically been sold out. There's going to be. It's going to be a great show to be at because it's going to be a real buzz that night. I'll be. I'll be. And we can all uh, walk to our house afterward. It's going to be great. <laughs> you certainly it's can. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Right. Last but not least, I've got to touch on November the 28th, leading up to what could be the most momentous occasion in your promotional company's career to date. I think that's a fair statement. Tyson Fury goes out and beats Vladimir Klitschko to capture a free version of the heavyweight title. How, how would, you, would you put that in words in terms of magnitude? Well, just that little speech there has made the ears on the back of my neck stand like down. So. <laughs> just your little intro. Um, it would mean everything to us as a company. We've battled through thick and thin, and we've been on a hell of a roller coaster. So it would mean everything to us, everything to me, everything to all the team, everything to everyone at Hennessy Sports, everything to the, the Fury family. You know. Great family, great people, and they deserve they they deserve this. They really do. They've done things properly. They're they're quality people. We've done things properly. We all deserve it. And I, and I, I just think it's fate. I really do believe that Tyson's going to pull this off. I've always since since I, I signed Tyson, there's all, there's just been something there that I've always felt like I was in good hands because even when he touched down, even when he weren't in shape. I always felt, I always had this belief that he, he would always find a way to win. And of course, you know, with Peter now, he's just, he's like a machine, you know? His, 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 his conditioning, his fitness, his technical game plans, everything, no, you know, no stones unturned. Everything's, everything's done brilliantly. And, you know, the faith I had in him before as a fighter, with that, with everything, Peter's put around Tyson, you know, I, I, uh, we chose this route. I, I believe he's going to become a unified heavyweight champion and not only become heavyweight champion, but actually take out a legend in the process. And, and you know, it'd be, it's hard for me to put it in words what it would mean to all of us. One thing about the Furies, 
They are loyal, loyal people. They can see the respect and loyalty they have for you, and the loyalty and respect you have for them. Is that nice as a promoter to see that sort of that sort of respect from your fighters and the people you work with? Me? It is. It really is, and it, and, it, and it means the world to me because, I, you know, that's all I like to do nowadays is try and surround myself with proper people. Yeah. I've had letdowns. I've had. Um, things happen in the past that I never would have thought happened in a million years people doing certain things that I never thought they would have done in a million years so I'm very you know I'm very cautious of who I actually who I'm close to and who I work with and you know who I operate with now and you know to, to have like-minded people like Peter Tyson and John means the world to me because you know we're all together for the right reasons and you know we'll go through brick walls for each other do you think he's got to stop Vladimir Klitschko to be victorious in Germany if it's a close fight and it goes to the points do you think the hype and the aura and the, the legend of Klitschko will see him through I think that he's gonna he's, he's gonna have to win really wide on points, really sort of like wipe the floor with him boxing wise, or he's gonna have to take him out. But let's not forget Tyson's capable of either. He's got a brilliant boxing brain. He's got great range. He's he's, he's very light on his feet for a heavyweight. He can, he can box. He can fight. He can punch. He can you know he, he's he's got everything in his. Do you know what shocks me about him? His boxing knowledge. Yeah. Sit and talk to him if you, if you just get a chance, not just you, but anyone, about his about boxing. He, the, the stuff he knows and just the obscure facts and yeah. random trivia he knows about boxing is unbelievable. Yeah, he's, he's a very sharp individual. Student of the game. Very sharp individual. Anyone who underestimates him is a fool. Yeah, I agree. Because he's very well read. He, he, he analyzes stuff. He takes time out. He's, he, he studies things. And he's, 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 a, he's a clever, sharp individual. And, uh, and, and I, I, I know him very well, so trust me when I say that. You know, he shouldn't be underestimated. No, one thing's for sure, his unpredictability has definitely got under Vladimir's skin. I don't think he knows whether he was coming or going at that presser. So, yeah. Yeah, no, he didn't. And, you know, for me, he, 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 was, a, he was spooked a little bit. And uh, Tyson does that to everyone now. If you look back, if you look back to the Cunningham fight, Rogan. Yeah, the two Ch Chisora fights, yeah. the Rogan fight. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, if you look back to all of them, Something always happened at them press conferences. He always, psychologically, sort of got one over him, you know? Speaking of psychologically. David A twice, exactly, yeah. Speaking of psychologically. Good point. Why didn't you put the costume on, mate? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Do you know what? Why didn't you put it on? It would have been legendary. If you were walking in as one of the characters, I'm not going to say what character, it would have been legendary. Well, you know what? I hope you're not talking about Robin because... <laughs> 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 but I'll tell you what, and I'm being serious now, I was dreading the call from Peter asking me to turn up as the Penguin. I was dreading that call. <laughs> It would have been the best one. It would have been the best one, right? So um, I'm glad that call never came in. But uh, I know Huey got the call for Robin, and uh, yeah. You know, Listen, Huey. there was rumours that you was you was in the casting to play that part. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Do you know what I mean? It was down to a couple of few select people, and you was in the running. I know Huey was the was Robin, but he said, you know, why me? Why the, why am I the weasel? So I think he came in as the Joker in the end. But uh, that's funny. Yeah, that's but, funny. Yeah, no. Listen, Tyson Fury, he creates magical, funny moments. I'm hoping he goes out and does the business, as are the majority of the country. So, the British fighter fighting, flying the flag in the heavyweight division, going abroad. Everyone should be get behind him with this, you know? Everyone in the